thank you to everybody for tuning in. Shout out to all the people for subscribing to the channel. If you ain't subscribed, go ahead and take your time out. Hit that pause button and subscribe. You know, hit the like button if you like the video. Hit that notification bell so everybody else who subscribed already, I know the video is dropping because YouTube be bugging sometimes and they won't post your notifications and uh and let, let people know that the video about to drop. So hit that, that hit that um notification bell. It's your boy PBK9. Let's get off in that news. Yo, this this the, this the one I've been talking all that trap. This the one. Bang, 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 bang. Yes, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Foos. <laughs> yes, we. 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 Yeah, I ain't no super and businessman like you. You know, I'm just a gangster, I suppose. And I want my corners. Now I'm not a writer. Okay. Child, Diamond Puppy, 
and uh, Blue Buffalo Puppy. All right. This is just my opinion. I'm not about to break down all the stats and this and that. But I know that Diamond Puppy, I just read the back, has 31% protein, which is a pretty high percentage, percentage of protein. And it has 20% um, fat. So that's 3120. 3120. High proteins, you know, pretty decent in fat. All right. Puppy Child. You know, when it comes to Puppy Child and Diamond, I'm going to say Puppy Child is the better food for puppies. Especially if you got a sick puppy. Especially if you got young puppies and growing puppies. You know, I feel like Puppy Child, this is my opinion, is better for the dog bones growing up. Because just, because I, I started off with Puppy Child, you know, and I was trying to figure out certain things because I used Blue Buffalo with, with Marino when he was young. And it really gave him a growth spurt, Blue Buffalo Puppy. I don't, he, really, he he big compared to his brothers and sisters. Like, they all in the 60s. He like 75, 80. He be like 80, 85 pounds if I bring him in the house where he not running around on the chain all day. But uh, I feel like the puppy child really don't get the credit it should get because it's a commercial food. But at the same time, the puppy child do get the credit because every pretty much all dog men know that puppy child, you know, is the way to go when you got small dogs. And I don't, I'm not sure what the percentage is on the puppy child, but I'm quite sure that the protein percentage is way under 31% protein, you know. But I've, I've seen that that diamond is not, you know, shooting my puppies up the way I want them to shoot up. So I'm going to switch off that diamond puppy. I'm either going back to the blue buffalo puppy, which I'm talking about in a few seconds, or the puppy child until they get to the age where, you know, where they can eat another dog food. Because i really seen a lot of growth when I was using the puppy child, you know. And, and the only thing about the puppy child is, and I even had this in my pit bulls, some dogs get sensitive to the, to the dog food like puppy child. I had one dog that always threw puppy child up. Always threw it up. I thought he was sick. But it was just the food. He was, it was sensitive to his stomach. And he wasn't good with it. I gave him another food and, you know, he had no problems with it after that. Now, this is one thing I did observe when it comes to the blue buffalo. The blue buffalo puppy does shoot your dog up you know, like makes him grow fast. It gets, it's like it gets him his full potential size. It don't cut back, you don't get no stunted dog, no none of that. When you shoot him that blue buffalo puppy, he gonna grow. Whatever size he get off that blue buffalo puppy and you got him wormed right, wormed out real good, he gonna grow with that blue buffalo puppy, you know? But if my dog were to fall sick or if my dog start you know, knuckling up or acting like his bones get weak, then I, you know, the puppy child is the one that's gonna bring him back. And if you and you feed your dogs uh, adult dog food and their puppies, you know, you can look for little things that happen like knuckling, and some people call it knuckling, rickets, uh, you know, when the dog legs start bending in. You can look for stuff like that to happen when you start feeding them, the, the puppies adult food because the adult food don't have the proteins in it for the puppy that he needs to grow. You know, it's gonna keep him alive and it's gonna keep him where well, he ain't dying or none of that and he's gonna get grow, but he's not gonna grow fast as the guy who, whose dog is on puppy food. So although between these three foods, the puppy child, the diamond puppy, and the blue buffalo puppy, I feel like the blue buffalo puppy shot my dog up to a size where, you know, I was satisfied with. I feel like the puppy child if, it, if, it, if your dog is not sensitive to it, I feel like puppy child is going to be better for your dog, you know, far as nutrients wise. Far as nutrients. At least you get him to that age where he can eat a, a, a high quality dog food and you don't got to worry about his bones, his bones as far as the, the early development of his bones. Because first, that first month or that first couple months is real important on how big your dog going to be when he get a year old or a year and a half. Cause if you if you slack on that first couple months of food, then you gonna end up with a smaller dog than that guy who who, who feeding this dog right, warming this dog right, giving him the right amount of sunshine, giving him the right amount of exercise, all that matter. Taking a puppy out, walking them, um, letting them get plenty of exercise, running around with them, doing all kind of stuff, letting them stretch the muscles, 
all that matter on how big your puppy get when it's a year, year old, year and a half and all that. I got who this feeding this puppy, this feeding him, you know, taking care of him, warming him good, but he on the chain and he never leave off that chain. There's no way that he can be the same size as one who's doing the same exact stuff, but giving him more exercise. Cause that exercise is gonna help us help him grow. Alright, next thing I'm gonna tell you, where you get your good carpet meal from. You know, carpet meal gonna build up your strength. And I had a good carpet meal, you know. I, I ordered a few of them or I purchased a few of them, but I had a good one and it came from Grand Carpet Meal. Grand Carpet Meal will send you a good carpet meal and it's pretty much already put together. You have to tighten up a few screws here and there and, and add, you know, put the bolts together or whatever, but it's basically already put together. And it works phenomenal. It works phenomenal. It puts good strength in your dog. It's pretty sturdy. Last, you know, I had mine out in the weather with no cover or nothing on it. You know, I had a little, um, like a grill cover on it, matter of fact. But it was out in the weather as far as being outside. And it still turned the way it needed to turn. So if you're looking for a good carpet mill, grand carpet mill. And I think I paid like right at 400 some dollars for it maybe. For the large one. They got a large one and I think they got a small one, which is probably about... 200 and some dollars and I think the large one is probably like 300 right at 400 dollars somewhere in that area But grand carpet mill check the website out if you're looking for a good carpet mill Okay, now let's keep it moving the next thing I'm gonna talk about is For guys who got American Pitbull Terriers is not registered. You know, I got my own registry, but I'm not here to promote that right now I'm talking about something else If you're trying to get down with ADA, you don't got no papers, but you know your dog background This is what I suggest you to do Register your dog up with the ADBA Limited Performance Program, which means he's not actually registered into their system, their database, because, you know, he didn't have a registration, but he can compete in all the shows, as far as the, all the uh, agility shows and different little things that they have for ADBA. He can still compete in that. And if you're good, you know what I'm saying, this is just my opinion. My opinion. If you're going to these shows, and you, you got these dogs, they, they're not registered, but you got them in the limited performance program. And you're going to these shows, you're meeting people. And as year go on, year go on, you stay in good grace with the right people. I don't see why you couldn't get your dog registered with ADBA, you know, once you put that work in. You got to put the work in. You're not going to be able to just call them with an unregistered dog and then, you know, get it in that system. But I think, you know, I could be wrong, you know. Could be wrong, but I think if you put your dog in that limited performance program, you know, start them out, let them, you know, let them get to meet the dog, let them know about the system. I mean, let them know about your dog and everything. And once your dog start having puppies and you register them up the same way and you, you showing up to the shows and you meeting different people, eventually you're going to be them met the right people and you explain to them what's going on. And they, they, they seeing that you got good American pit bull terriers that's coming out here performing the way they need to perform and doing what they need to be doing. Then they might work with you later on in the future about actually putting your dogs in the database. That's what I'm saying. You know, if it was me, I would do that. You know, if I if I got a person who I got you on a limited performance program, but year after year you showing up here, showing up there, meeting this person, meeting that person, talking to this person, and everybody got good things to say about your dogs, then. I don't see why it would be a problem putting you in the system if you got, you know, at least know the pedigree of your dog. At least know it. If you don't know the pedigree, then I, it's going to be a little harder, but at least know the pedigree. If you don't know the pedigree, then it's going to take, it's going to be a little harder and it's going to take you a little longer because you got to build up that pedigree. But if you at least know the pedigree and start showing up to them show and working your dog the right ways and letting people uh, see your dogs and stuff like that, you never know, man. You never know. I, I got a feeling that they'll put you in that database, but it's worth a shot. It's worth a shot for anybody who don't got papers on the American Pit Bull Terry, you know, and that's that. Okay, and next on the list, I got to let you know, man, I can't be responding to no negative nothing, you know what I'm saying? No, nothing negative. I can't be responding. You make something about me, you make something about me. You say something about me, you say something about me. You know, I got to work with myself on that, you know what I'm saying? Because I got to understand that this is just the beginning, you know what I'm saying? As the road, as I get to what I'm trying to get to, the road gonna get harder, the comments gonna get harsher, and the hate gonna get harsher, you know what I'm saying? So I gotta expect all that, you know what I'm saying? Anybody gotta expect that, you gotta expect that, he gotta expect that, it depends on what you're trying to do. 
You know what I'm saying? But the more success you achieve in what you're trying to do, you got to expect more people to hate on what you're trying to do or more people to try to knock you off your, 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 your grind. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, like I say, I'm, I'm going to comment to all the, the, the positive comments. I'm even comment to the stuff that people, that's, well, how do you put it, uh, constructive criticism. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even talking about constructive criticism. I'm just not going to respond to a video made here, video made there, video made here. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay? Now just my opinion again. A social dog, two dogs, the same bloodline, same exact bloodline, you know, two different places. One on the chain with a great dog man who keeps him on the chain. One with a great dog man who keeps his dog on the chain but walks him around more, do, does more walking, you know, socialization with that dog. The dog that does more socialization is always going to be the better dog. I don't care what they say. You can have one on the chain. Same bloodline now, same bloodline, unless one dog is just naturally better than the other dog. You know, you can't do too much about that. You know what I'm saying? But, same bloodline, both dogs great hog hunters. One stays on the chain, one is out, out and about throughout, throughout the day socializing. This place, that place, this place, that place. The dog that's out and about going to be the better dog because at the end of the day, when that hog hunt start or whenever you start doing whatever you're doing, it, whatever sport you're in, agility, anything, people going to start talking. People going to start making noise. People going to start cheering. People going to start, you know, ripping and rapping. Dogs get distracted. You know what I'm saying? One, one look the wrong way, you know, could cause a dog to lose a, 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 a hunt. Can cause a dog not to jump as far when he's jumping in the pool to get the object. Can cause the dog to do anything out of the ordinary. You know, because he's not used to the people clapping, people cheering, screaming. Uh, you know, different places they might have people quiet, or you might go to places where you got a whole bunch of noise. So that dog that's being socialized, he's gonna be used to all that. And that's not gonna bother him at all. You know, what 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 you know what's gonna bother him is when he's on that chain. And then people start clapping, making noise, doing this, doing that. He's not used to hearing all that. That's when he makes a sudden move to see what, what's going on here. And then that could be the sudden move of that touch catching right in the neck from that hog. You know, so you gotta be, you gotta, you know, just take it from your own standpoint. That's just my opinion. You know, the dog out and about is gonna always have better features, you know, than the dog on the chain. Same dogs, same little, you know what I'm saying? Same exact dog, same little, same tenacity. The dog on the out and the bout is gonna be better. And real quick, if there's anybody who has any Maltese puppies right now, hit me up. I got somebody who want one, hit me up, and you know, it gotta be full-blooded. You know, they want a full-blooded and they want a puppy. If anybody got a Maltese puppy, I think that's how you pronounce it, right now, hit me up, and you know, if you're in the South or North Carolina area, cause they don't wanna do too much traveling unless you plan on getting a dog here, you know. Now for South Carolina area, if you got one, hit me up. And this is January, don't hit me up black in uh, June or nothing like that. We, this is January 20th. But I ain't gonna keep y'all here too long, man. It's your boy, PBK9, giving you that dog news the way I always do, fair and unbiased. Some gonna like it, some ain't. Thank you for subscribing. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit that like bell before you get up out of here. It's your boy, PBK9. I'm out.